let us first, uh, we, we, right now, we, we, uh, we, in our previous presentation also, we said like we are deploying heavily 100G. So when we are doing that, uh, as a Facebook data center, it's huge, right? And uh, we, we really wanted to uh, build one, any mechanism that we can predict this failure uh, beforehand so that we can run our network smooth. So basically what we are trying to uh, build from last uh, few months is like failure prediction mechanism of uh, opti pluggable interconnects at our data center. So the problem statement here is like there is no mechanism at this point where we can predict this failure beforehand and we can stop the network loss before it happens in our data center. So, so to do that, there are several team, internal team, Facebook team, we try to build a tool. Uh, there's like uh, so many teams work together to understand the data collection process real time. So what we, we have built here, a tool which will pull the data through I square C. I think we have another talk, a couple of talks, uh, that we can use that I square C uh, feature in those uh, optical modules and we can uh, pull the real-time data like temperature, bias current, um, uh, also the optical power uh, by data center, by supplier, by part number. So we get all this information real-time from the data center. So this is a typical example of the temperature readout from the tool. If we go to the next slide. So similarly, we can, do, uh, we can pull all the data and monitor bias current and the transmitter readout power. So when we are doing that, uh, and when we are collecting all this real-time data, we found a very interesting correlation between this current temperature and the optical power. So if you look at this, uh, it's, it's, it's a basic physics, like when your optical power is going down, your uh, current will go up, the wires current will go up to maintain that optical power. And if you look at this, this optical power is going down. At, at the same time, your, when the temperature is going up, your optical power is going down. It is exactly 180 degree phase shift. So this is a very interesting uh, data we, uh, we got. And you see the current is trying to take this optical power, uh, trying to stabilize this optical power, but this current has a limit. But this is, uh, this current, bias current, is depends on different suppliers, like it, it has a different saturation level. So, uh, if we can go to the next slide. So, what we are trying here is, if you look at the laser degradation, okay, over time, so, we found out, okay, let's say this is your starting point, and from here, we are, the network is on, and it, it's, the laser power is degra uh, degradation is going down, and then at a certain slope, we can say, okay, if it goes below that level, we can take that module out, because that's gonna fail in next two weeks or in three weeks or in a month. So basically what we did, we collected like several samples uh, based on this graph and we did some uh, aggressive testing at uh, our uh, facility and we found like most of the part failed in two weeks. Okay, so which is the indicator like, it, I, I won't say like this is the ultimate but this is a way of we can predict, at least we can save some, some of the uh, failure at our data center. So to do that we can, I think we have, so some of the basic diet failures and how it hap happening. So I, I would pass it to Vincent to talk about more. That. Yeah, um, so this is a very interesting, especially for the first one, uh, for this first one, this is actually got our intention. Um, you know, the, the biggest problem for us is that the lost traffic in the real data center is really challenging. It's a much cost higher than any switch or hardware equipment or, you know, and then we want to predict it. So this curve is actually showing us something like, uh, you know, your temperature uh, changes and then you get the power. And why the BIOS current is going up? Because they have a loopback system inside. They will increase the, the current, increase the power. So if you 
you, if you take the very, very stable, you know, the structure, and then you will understand the mechanism uh, behind the failures. So this is a typical, like the DAB laser. You have a bracket grating area, you have active area, and then on this side you have like the uh, air coating, and then you have the back coating. And then normally where this, uh, we call the uh, total power monitoring or TPM inside the transmitter is actually monitoring the power. So what happened is that when this, uh, you know, the, the light is going through it, uh, especially like the temperature going, uh, going up, so physically all the things are kind of expansion, right? So your wavelengths are shifted, and also the power could be shifted a little bit. But this power actually gave you your, your, your loop back in, on the firmware to increase the bias in order to keep the consistent power on the output. So if you're looking at this one, this is structure, actually, what we found out is some of the basics about the laser. You could, could be have the, uh, the power reduction. Uh, uh, re reduction. Uh, power reduction, one here, we try to distinguish two things. One is the power reduction because of the environment, as I mentioned, the temperature changes. Another one actually is, can be caused by some other, like the real defects inside the laser, uh, will cause this uh, degradations. And it can cause the wavelength shifting, Right. So this is one thing, and then also the, um, and like uh, the spectrum of the, the line width widening, and that is uh, causing another of uh, the problem, and then the modulations are the causing the problem, and also you know like some of the defects inside, is especially as the active area after the along the time, this uh, uh, defects are propagated to other places that can cause the failure as well. So. But based on this one, actually, we try to understand, uh, try to propose a one mechanism which we can build into uh, the uh, transceiver itself, run, uh, you know, to to predict the failures. So one slide uh, later, this is something like the loopback. Uh, the one key uh, uh, constant, uh, the key parameter here is called the TPM module, where you have like the self looping back to increase the bias because of the power of monitoring going down. And then, um, and then you have, um, um, so we basically try to use this mechanism. What we try to do here is that um, we, we're going to open the EEPROM through I2C and then to record this information along the time. So at the time one, we recorded the, uh, these numbers, and then at the time level, and then record another level, the information in the EEPROM, and then we can use the script to calculate the slope. As I mentioned in the earlier phases, so that's oscillation, which is not the, uh, the actual failure. But it causes the, the power going down, but that is not the real defects. And we want to see that uh, the power is a slope uh, degradation. That is where we want to build in on this one. So in order to do that, I and mean, we think we need to do several things okay, um, in our, our concept. One is we want to make sure that's the TPM module. Right now, most of the uh, module uh, uh, supplier when they're building this TPM, they don't have not necessarily very accurate uh, calibration on the TPM, these devices. They're just uh, buying it, building it. Uh, and then by doing this one, we want to have a very good calibration. A second one, we need to, um, um, uh, to have uh, the algorithm in the, um, the transceiver, which you can open the I2C that can record the time, uh, the, the, the uh, bias, temperature, all this information along the timestamp into some of the area in the EEPROM. And then we can use a switch or some other devices to calculate the devices. Even these devices are pulled it out, and then we can still have all this information inside. So we tr this is the way we try to predict the failures. As I already mentioned that we pull several units and then we prove that the concept works. Thank you. Yeah, it's in. More? Yeah. It's okay, one, one, or two, one or two quick questions. Follow on to the question I, I raised, you know, did you also observe, you know, a failure where the power did not decrease, but the relaxation or oscillation frequency decreased? Uh, we don't see this since. Don't see that since. Yeah, we don't see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Which is good. Thank okay. Thank you. Uh, a quick question. So is it possible you can monitor the spectrum? The spectrum, spectrum is going to be very challenging because uh, the way we're using here is the EEPROM recording it. The spectrum is not recorded. So okay. basically, you, what, whatever is available uh, inside the DOM, you can read the DOM and get those parameters, and you can predict this kind of tool, right? So. OK, that's two quick questions. We'll have more time at the end. There's one more discussion. There we go. <laughs> 
Thanks, guys. Thank you.